I am so glad you're here for a brand new series called Mastering Organic Synthesis. Test your organic chemistry skills to see if you can figure out the multi-step synthetic pathway to achieve this chemical transformation. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another synthesis to solve for the next video. This is the multi-step synthesis of turning naphthalene into anthracene. When I was in graduate school, this was actually on one of my synthesis exams. There may be different ways to form anthracene starting from naphthalene, but this is the route that I have found to be most efficient. It's possible that you found a different pathway and I'd love to hear about it down in the comment section. The first step in the synthesis would be an electrophilic aromatic substitution to sulfonate the naphthalene. And we can do that by adding fuming sulfuric acid or H2SO4, likely at elevated temperatures, and this would allow us to sulfonate the second ring on naphthalene. So here we can add an sulfonate group at this position. From here we can do a substitution reaction where we replace this sulfonate group with cyanide. So we can add something like iron cyanide and that will replace this sulfonate group with a cyan cyano group. So CN is called the cyano group and this is a reaction that you can do to substitute the sulfonate group for CN. And the cyano group or nitrile is a very versatile functional group that we can turn into things like carboxylic acids. And this can be done in a variety of pathways with H3O plus and heat or potentially even KOH, which is the example that I will use here to convert this nitrile group into a carboxylic acid. So this will then convert this cyano group into a carboxylic acid. From here, we can do what's called a birch reduction, which is when we use sodium and mercury to reduce this aromatic species. Now, importantly, carboxylic acid is going to be an electron withdrawing group, which is going to leave our reduction to occur in a very specific place. So now, importantly, when we form this product of this transformation, we are going to be left with a double bond at this position and this is going to be our resulting product following this birch reduction. From here, we can turn a carboxylic acid to an ester, and we can do this in a variety of pathways, one of which would be going through a two-step process where you form an acyl chloride and then subsequently do an esterification, or in this case, I'm going to use Fischer esterification, where you use an acid like hydrochloric acid, and if you add something like an alcohol, in this case ethanol, I can turn this into an ethyl ester. So from here, our bicyclic ring is still going to be present, and now we are left with our double bond here, but now we have formed an ester, specifically OET. And this is going to allow us to form our third ring. Remember, naphthalene has two rings, anthracene has three rings, and the way that we do this is called a Dieckmann cyclization, where if we have this alpha-beta unsaturated ester, we can turn this, since it's a great Michael acceptor, into a cyclic ring doing Dieckmann cyclization. So in that Dieckmann cyclization, we need a very good Michael donor, and in this case, we're going to use this reactant, which is also has an ester group on this side, and we just need a strong base, like sodium ethoxide, for example. So sodium ethoxide would be a sufficient base in this case, and it's going to allow us to form that third ring. And this is the product of that transformation where we did a Dieckmann cyclization. Now, importantly, from here, we can remove this ester group just through the addition of an acid. So by adding something like hydrochloric acid, we can remove this ester group to give us our three ring system which will still contain two ketones, which we'll have to deal with shortly. But from here, now we can take this product, which has these two ketones, and move on to our next step. So I'll finish drawing in the double bonds. And from here, we're actually only one step away from our final product. So this molecule is called anthraquinone, and it turns out that we can deoxygenate it in order to form anthracene by simply adding zinc dust and doing a distillation in the presence of zinc. And this is a very advanced reaction. So unless you've taken a more advanced organic synthesis class, you may have not have seen this reaction where you do a zinc distillation in order to deoxygenate this anthraquinone to form our anthracene compound. So putting this all together, the first step is going to be to sulfonate that bicyclic ring, substitute the sulfonate group using hexacyanoiron to end up with a nitrile that can be turned into a carboxylic acid 
using KOH under reflux conditions. Subsequently, we can do a Birch reduction in order to form our carboxylic acid with just a single pi bond in that second ring. Subsequently, doing a Fischer esterification gives us an ester, and then a Dieckmann cyclization gives us our third ring. The ester group can be removed by the addition of hydrochloric acid and heat, and then finally, the anthraquinone can be deoxygenated by using a zinc dust in a distillation apparatus. Now, I will be posting two multi-step synthesis practice videos every month, but if you're interested in more advanced synthesis, I also have a new membership down below that you can join for two exclusive additional videos every month. If you enjoyed this brand new series, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For the next public video, I'd love to see if you can figure out the multi-step synthesis of this chemical transformation. Post it as a comment down below and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss out on another video. I'll see you next time.